This is Jesus Manuel Menagarza. I'm at Claiborne State Park. Claiborne State Park is about, uh, I estimate, 30 miles south of Fort Worth, Texas. It's an easy uh, half hour drive, approximately, unless uh, your GPS takes you down some very circuitous routes and then it takes 45 minutes. But it was okay. My wife got to see some llamas on the way. <laughs> she really loves llamas. So let me turn this camera around so you can take a peek. Uh, this is one of the stops. Uh, we're going to be checking out some of the campsites. I'm going to be doing some fishing. We're going to be doing some hiking. Uh, hopefully I get it all in this video. Uh, right now we're at one of the stops here. It has uh, showers. Ooh, let me see. Let me turn the camera around so you can see. There's some of the facilities right here. They have showers, outdoor showers. They have some um, vending machines, which is very nice. Out, you know, some fresh water, etc., etc. And then we have some camping sites over there, you know, some uh, picnic areas. Not sorry, campers. It's a good size lake. It's not a gigantic lake. And people can go swimming right here and on a hot 100 degree Texas day. That is definitely appreciated. That is definitely appreciated. So right now we're at uh, this little swimming area and people are taking pictures. And over there on the right, some uh, families are having themselves a nice uh, respite and uh, enjoying the picnic. So right over here they have a dock. It's right now closed. Apparently it's uh, in need of repair. Very nice and I'm pretty sure you can reserve certain parts of this park. And this is some of the reeds. I'm pretty sure you could reserve certain portions of the park. Right there they have a very large uh, fireplace. Maybe you can uh, cook some food. They have some picnic tables everywhere. And uh, <clears throat> from the entrance to here was about, I estimate, a half mile. And uh, that half mile I saw about uh, uh, four or five stops where you can uh, park your car and go take a hike. Across the way over here, there's my wife. She's reading the map. We just got here, so she's enjoying that. It has some very nice uh, restrooms. Boys and girls, and right here in this location, they have a playground for the kids. For my wife and I, since we we're a senior citizens and we got the uh, half off Texas Pass, and that's free for anybody that lives in Texas. You get a half off uh, card, and I got that today. They gave it to me right at the front gate. It's free again, and uh, instead of paying the usual six dollars per, we paid six dollars for two people or half price. So, very nice little park. So what do you think? I'm starting to get a very light mist right now at one of these campsites. This is the first campsite we've come to. It has water and electric. And it has these very nice, very nice trees. So here's my truck. And we're just here just to check it out. We're going actually just to go some hiking and some fishing today. So this is number 10. Let's check out the pedestal, see what it looks like. It's uh, still working order, 50 amp. Looks, no, it looks like 30, yeah. Not much. And they have some trees here. You get a metal uh, table, which should be very cozy in the heat of the summer. If it's 110 degrees uh, outside, it should be about at least 90, yeah? You got a little hook to hang some odds and ends. And then you got a little bit of a swampy area behind you. Again, this is just a uh, hop, step, and a jump. You can walk from here to that swim area in that restroom we were just at, okay? And here's my truck in the spot. Again, we're not camping today. We're just checking out the various campsites. Across the way, there's nothing. There's just with some grass. So this is a good spot, actually. And uh, so people are on their bicycles. Super humid today. It's supposed to be close to 100. 
People are in their very upscale uh, Airstream interstate over there. A couple back was uh, in uh, another Airstream, so got some people with some cash here. But what do you think? We're driving down the road. Let's check out this uh, the site 17 to 13 Shady Springs camping area. Let's take a quick peek. gigantic ones. Looks like everybody's pretty much around the uh, 20 to uh, 30 foot range. Very nice. There's a primitive group uh, camping area. Camp area. Very nice. Let me see if I can park on the side really show you. So here's the primitive group camping area. That's very nice. I think it goes back about a good uh, 100 feet. It's about a good 75 feet wide, I think. It's about the uh, size of uh, three home lots. So that's about an acre, huh? My rough estimation. So you got a beat up, uh, you got a, a picnic table that looks like it's seen better days a little bit. What do you call it? G-jot, as my wife would say. And then you got a fire ring. And you got the entrance here, it says uh, Primitive Group Camping Area. Quite a few. And of course you have that camping area that we just drove through over here. You have a Flagstaff E-Pro, Arctic Fox, some vintage units, etc., etc. Get a wide open spaces here. It's not all crammed in, you know. So if you're camped over here, you have a little space over here that you can look at that's relaxing. Very nice. I like it quite a bit. This is a nice campground. I would recommend coming down the you know, late spring, early fall. Should be perfect. Of course, uh, in Texas, you never know when it's going to be uh, raining cats and dogs. Just a week ago, it was, you know, we had a. Let me just. Uh, Use the appropriate language. Hella lot of rain. We had a hella lot of rain. I mean, it rained, rained, rained. Everything was flooded constantly. And it was for like about three of the four weeks it was raining. So you don't want to be here when it's constantly raining. Uh, maybe you need a respite from uh, something. And, you know, you can always be inside your travel trailer, fifth wheel, class A, B, C, and just relax. If you're in a tent... I would not suggest it. So I came in from that way. That's the entrance to the park. And we saw one campground over there. Then we saw the uh, swimming area. And then was the entrance way over there. So we're about a mile into the park, okay? Let's move on. Boys and girls, do you know what that is? <laughs> so this is set up for, uh, this is number 47, this is another loop. That's 50 and 30 amp, very nice. So that's number 47. And of course you can see how it's uh, constructed. Very, very, very nice. My wife likes number 46 across the way. She wants to get that one when we go camping here. Should we decide to come camping in Texas? 
So we backed up into this unit just to check it out. The big uh, thing about this uh, area is that you have, and that's number 46 right there. Very nice back, nice little space. And you got some people have their chairs over there, etc., etc. And you got these, uh, go down here, relax. Very nice. Just straightened out the camera right now. Some people fishing next to me here on the left. And again, you have some very nice uh, couple chairs, couple noodles. Couple towels, we'll set up there with a little swing. Very nice, very nice. And the water's looking pretty clear, which is very nice also. I like that. What are you trying to catch? Perch. Perch? Yeah. Right there, huh? I had a couple of little bites on it. Oh, very nice. Nice cool breeze coming off the water, huh? Yeah, it is. That is very pleasant. Is this accessible by everybody right here or just by specific persons that have that spot or that spot? Can anybody come to this spot? I guess so. We stayed where your parts at there. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Where are you from? Cleveland. Cleveland? Yeah. I'm from Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Again, here's some views of some sites. Again, uh, some nice chairs, fire pit, people hanging out. And of course, they have a very nice view of the lake. Modest little lake. But right now, it's overcast and humid. But we're getting this seriously, seriously cool breeze coming off the lake. Lake effect coolness. Very nice. Let me walk back to my vehicle. So I'm going to walk down this little path. And you can see up ahead, people are in their spots. You're not jammed together. It's a good park. I, I give this park a good solid B, you know, for convenience. And there's my truck across the way. I guess you could just park right here and go fishing. And that's what that gentleman did. Just parked here and here's the garbage cans. I don't think there's any bears, wolves. There are probably some coyotes. Definitely some vultures. People have their uh, inflatables. I've seen people on the uh, lake. They have a boat ramp, of course. What lake doesn't have a boat ramp? Hey, we saw finally a Class A. I haven't seen a Class A since I've been here. Mostly travel trailers and fifth wheels. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. Leave your kind and super friendly comments about this park uh, below. And again, uh, again, I greatly appreciate that. This couple here has been biking around the park quite a bit. My wife and I are thinking about coming back. And just, just for biking, just go bike, bicycle around. That should be fun. Let's see if we can catch something. Little ones. Three, four inches so far? Nah, not worth my time. 
I got braided line with a fluorocarbon leader, very modest setup, very modest uh, Zebco Eclipse pole here. Very basic. Let me see if I can catch something eventually. Thanks for watching. I'm fishing. My wife's over there just relaxing, reading a book in the shade. Got a little bit of a bite, a little nibble. Hope you're doing great wherever you're at. Maybe it wasn't a nibble. <laughs> it was just some uh, moss or grass. Again, uh, thanks for watching. I'm at uh, Claiborne State Park. It's a nice day. It's a nice Saturday. The, the breeze from the uh, water definitely cools you off. There are the fish, the little tiny ones following my uh, lure. We'll see. Let me interrupt this uh, campsite review. <laughs> With a little hike. We're taking the coyote, uh, my wife and I are taking the coyote run uh, hike. It's only about uh, a couple miles round trip. It's not that far. Basically it goes around the, uh, the lake a little bit. You see all these root outcroppings and such. Soil is a bit soft from the rain from the last couple weeks. And you can see quite a canopy of trees. They have quite a bit of uh, poison oak. You got to be very uh, wary of that. Supposedly you have armadillos, you have coyotes, you have herons and such. There's a little fence right there. Doesn't, they do not want you to uh, cross over to the other side, the dark side. And there's my wife up ahead with her backpacker, bright red backpack with bear bell, <laughs> everything on there. Very nice. So this is a pretty easy going hike. It's on the uh, map, which you can get at the uh, center. They'll give you a map. They'll give you all kinds of great information on Texas state parks. It's, they say it's a moderate hike. I've seen people with uh, hiking poles. I've seen a wide range of ages from 30s to 70s on this trail so far. Again, this is a Saturday. It's uh, before noon, before everybody wakes up in Texas. And uh, people are uh, probably gonna get here in the afternoon. They're probably gonna camp, bring their kids, jump in the water do all kinds of great stuff like that. A lot of fun, familial stuff. I'm enjoying this hike. Going up an incline, about a 20 uh, degree uh, incline. Not too bad. Got my hat on. Make sure I don't uh, get sunburned. You know, sometimes being a medium complected. Latino, I get a little arrogant sometimes and think I'm not going to get sunburned. But uh, I remember taking my shirt off near Port Aransas in the water. Coming back a couple hours later, and I was definitely feeling the effects of sunburn. So I learned my lesson. 
That's why I wear these long sleeve shirts. Even uh, a medium complected person as myself, a brown person. So, be you black, white, brown, yellow, red, whatever color you are, you always gotta protect your skin. You'd be shocked how things go. Let me turn around the camera, show you my wife. So what do you see there, sweetie? It's called a ash juniper, also known as mountain cedar or rock cedar. I wonder if this is the cedar that when we get cedar fever, you know, in the fall. It says that there are sweet blueberries and the birds love them. It's called an ash juniper. Oh, well, looks like it had a fire. Ash so you, can, you can actually see juniper. part of it here. No berries though. Whew. Struck by lightning or some old fire. Or, it's quite lovely. or the freeze during oh, the January, right. January 2021 right. freeze. A lot of things died. Like one of our rosemary plants died. A couple of our bushes died. A bush at you know, the park across the street from our house died. You gotta be careful. Mother Nature knows how to uh, take care of business. Think you know it all, things die. And live, it's part of the cycle of life. That's Philosophy 101 from Jesus Manuel Menagarza. <laughs> I was looking at a bit of information about a live oak. These are the famous ones, the ones, Texas is famous for live oaks. Well, any number of types of oaks, but this particular one, the live oak, the, the branches can actually circle down and lay down on the ground. And they can be like 100 and 150 years old. There's some very famous live oak trees in Texas. Very nice. We, we had a nice live oak on our house in uh, you know when we lived in South Texas. Okay you can pass in the middle. Thank you. You are welcome. So uh, you have uh, some uh, suntan cream on. Hopefully some anti-suntan. So you're trying. You're trying not. To, what what SPF do you have? This is about a hundred. A hundred. It's for my face. I understand. I understand. I have to be beautiful and young. Yes. Uh, you know. You know. So this is the Schumard oak. You see the the points. Yeah. So one of the great things about this trail is that they have. Oh, you know the word, like educational information yeah. along the way. Oh, a ladybug. How cool is that? But these Schumard oaks have these little pointy areas here, these prongs at the end. And that's the way that you know it's a Schumard versus a live oak or a red oak or a white oak. <laughs> There's so many different kinds of trees here. Oh, look out. Wow, it's a nice hike today. It's not too uh, hot. I can imagine how hot it's going to be around uh, four or five o'clock tonight. It's going to be rather hot. Humid and hot. Welcome to Texas. So let's get back to the rest of our video and uh, maybe I'll interrupt it with some other shots of the lake. Who knows? It's all going to be a surprise, huh? This is the other side of the lake. Nice part of the lake. Again, I really uh, am enjoying hiking around the lake. So how are you doing, sweetie? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm a little uh, on the moist level, 
but other than that, my muscles feel great. I'm not over, it's not overly hot, but it's beautiful here. And there's a very nice coolish breeze coming from, out from this beautiful lake. So was it strenuous or not? Oh, you know, the trail guide said moderate, and I think it was moderate. I think there were maybe three areas where there was an incline or where there was a section where it was quite rocky, where you had to navigate big slabs of rocks, but no, I found it quite easy. Good. Glad you did. I was getting tired pretty fast. <laughs> I've been going to the gym. What you? Where have you been going? I've been going to the gym and working on an, on an elliptical and the exercise bike. So my stamina is a little bit... It's been on the increase. Very good. As for me, I've been sitting in front of the TV. No, I'm just joking. I've been walking around doing a little bit of exercise. Staying lean and relatively mean. Oh. Annie has lemonade. I'm going to get some of that lemonade right now. We're, and we're going to get back to the rest of the video. Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you are. What's today's date, by the way, Annie? I think it's the 12th. I think it's June 12th. Uh, my birthday's coming up soon. I'll be 100 years old. So uh, don't forget to send me presents. I, I would greatly appreciate a new Ferrari, a new Tesla. No, I just ignore that. Uh, just send cash. At the end of the paved road, they have this little picnic area, and of course, they have access to various trails around, you know, Claiborne State Park. Very nice state park. I really like it. Uh, you know, you know, for Texas, this gets a good solid B, I must admit, okay? Let me turn around the camera so you can see, uh, again, this is the tail end. You come in the entrance, and then you go all, you check out all the different campgrounds, and then you come to this, and this is the loop at the end, okay? Let's turn around the camera. So you have these little picnic areas, and let me see if anybody left a mess. Yes, they left a mess. They didn't clean up their mess. Not very nice, but the table looks pretty clean. And you have, uh, again, that's the way we came in. Let me straighten up the camera. There we go. Ooh, the camera had to move a little bit, so sorry about that. And then we go this way, and it loops around. And uh, there's my there's my truck right there, my little Chevy Colorado V6, towing capacity seven thousand pounds. <laughs> and this is another picnic area. And uh, let's walk around. So Texas has quite the extensive uh, state park system. They're not big on the federal system. Texas is one of the states known in the West for having uh, essentially uh, very strong property rights, essentially. Uh, they did not want to participate in the national park system to any major extent. You know, like California, a large portion of their state is national parks, Utah, a great majority of the state is national park. Same with Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, etc., etc. But Texas, it's like 90% of the land mass, I think, if, if I know correctly. This is Coyote Run Trail Park. And you can see it's a nice little trail. It is uh, in private hands. Okay, 90% of Texas is in private hands. And they're very proud of that. So here's a map of Claiborne State Park. We are right here at the tail end. And we looped around and they have various spots here. And way down there was the entrance, okay? They show pictures of the birds, the various hikes. This map is very detailed, it offers you a lot of information like where the restrooms and parking are, the boat ramps, the playgrounds, the bird blinds, full hookup sites. And they have a couple here and there, full hookup sites. Again, I would recommend calling the uh, state of Texas and see what's available. Of course, just like most state and national parks, 
Uh, they're available primarily during the weekdays. Weekends, they're packed with weekend warriors, okay? Let me turn on the camera. Starting to warm up. It's getting close to uh, 11 a.m. Hope you're doing well wherever you're at. I'm again at Claiborne State Park in uh, near Claiborne, Texas. Claiborne's pretty close, you know, that's where uh, Funtown RV is and pretty close to a motorhome specialist. So it's rather civilized area. <laughs> so hope you're doing well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. And please leave your kind and super friendly comments uh, below. And uh, don't forget to, uh, you know, check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash jmmgarza. And finally, finally, uh, check out my photo page. I've uh, created a website specifically uh, for my photographs from the RVTA uh, adventures that I've gone on, be they to Mexico or all over the United States and stuff like that. That's uh, rvta.myportfolio.com. Uh, Hope you're doing well wherever you're at. From Claiborne State Park, gracias, adios, bye-bye.